everyone, this is Michael. We'll be doing another pick by pick draft tutorial. This time we're gonna be playing Rogue. Valira. Um, I'm assuming you watched some of my previous videos, so I won't go into the really, really basic stuff. Anyway, let's talk about the hero power, first of all. In general, I divide all heroes into two categories, the ones that can deal one damage using their hero power, and those who can't. Yeah, so we have Jaina, uh, Rogue, and Druid on one side, and the rest on the other, and it really changes the way you play against them, yeah, mostly you know, how you deal with one toughness creatures. In general, you just grant them card advantage if you, you know, if you play it, for example, using a coin on your first turn, then it's their second turn and they just use their hero ability and kill the guy, that's really bad news for you, okay? You lost a card, you lost tempo, pretty much the worst thing you can uh, do. Anyway, um... On a different side, there are two ways to play the rogue. Okay, you can play tempo rogue even the in the arena. Yeah, it's the same in constructed play, but in the arena uh, it's less pronounced, but still. Either you're trying to outrun the other guy uh, using uh, cheap spells, backstab is uh, is your uh, savior in that deck, um, combo cards, etc., to just gain a dominant board position and drive through your advantage or you're playing value rogue okay the idea is to be more controlish uh, you get card advantage using all kinds of tricks um, my personal preference is value rogue simply because it fits better with my overall controlish nature but you know whatever the cards say yeah, they're the boss so let's jump in and see what we get Wow, okay. Great card. Um, Ancient Mage in a rogue deck is actually pretty decent. Okay, uh, you hopefully you'll get some backstabs, eviscerates, etc. So it can be not bad. Uh, slightly overpriced for his power toughness. Some Fury Protector, again, quite solid. I would definitely take it. Uh, it's uh, battle cry is very useful sometimes, but the SI agent is amazing. Okay, this is exactly what I meant by value rogue. Usually, you want to save it for a combo, and it's a removal spell. It's cheap. It's a nice body. Moving on. Yeah, now this is more complicated. Since I'm not playing a hunter, I would almost never take uh, the boar. Um, I'm I mean, there are certain situations where it can be useful, but uh, I'm usually, you know, I don't want to waste a card in this shit. Cold Blood, again, can be useful. I don't believe I'll be playing anything close to a Miracle Rogue, so I don't believe I need to do crazy one turn kills. I'll go with a solid Blood Sail Raider. Remember that we practically always have a weapon, at least available. Okay, so it's usually it's quite simple to get it better than 2-3, and even if you don't, it's okay. 2-3 for 2 mana is decent in the arena. Moving on. Pretty useless cards. Acolyte of Pain, I'm actually a big fan. Um, very nice. This is a really, really weird pick, because these are terrible. Shadow Step is not necessarily better. But at least it theoretically has some potential using, I don't know, comboing with an agent, maybe. I don't know. I mean, the Magma Ranger I will never pick because it's costy uh, in addition to being very vulnerable. Um, Marla Crater is too weak. Well, let's see what we can do with the Shadow Step in the arena. I'm not sure about this pick. Um, take whatever you feel necessary. In general, it's a <laughs> All three cards are crappy. Moving on. Um, pretty easy pick. Um, I don't like the Priestess. I talked about it earlier. Um, yeah, like uh, compared to the Ancient Brewmaster, same stats, two mana uh, less. Uh, with a battle cry that can sometimes be used as an advantage, also. I'll go with the Rifleman. Not the strongest pick, but it's solid. Um, since my hero ability 
Um, can do another one damage, right? They, you know, using my attack. So it's better, yeah. I can kill, you know, two toughness creatures uh, <laughs> without uh, losing uh, any other cards. Okay, moving on. Um, the abusive sergeant is not bad. You pretty much never want to play it on the first turn, since this is not a uh, you know, crazy warlock aggro deck. The wolf rider is quite nice. Um, I like the fact that uh, you can use it as a removal spell or you can use it as a creature if you're an aggro deck. But in this specific deck, I think I'll go with the guardian. It's not that great. I would rate it as mediocre best case scenario. Um, but I don't have four drops and I think I'll be slightly slower deck anyway. I'll go with the guardian. Okay, moving on. Mana Addict. Um, very good in Miracle Rogue <laughs> constructed deck. Don't think it will be that useful in my deck. Uh, this is an interesting question. The question, the questing adventurer, can sometimes really swing the game, um, especially if I get some more cheap spells, uh, backstabs, etc. Uh, Sun Fury Protector is just decent. So, specifically because I, I hope I'll get some more cheap spells, removal, I'll go with Adventurer, both picks are, are, are okay. It's not that great, okay, uh, I used to really think it's, it's amazing because, you know, it grows with whatever you cast, but since it starts out as 2-2 uh, two, two for 3 mana, so you have to, you know, get out of the danger zone. Yeah, you need to cast it uh, maybe on an empty board, or if you have a taunt creature, well, you, you get my point. Okay, moving on. I don't like the Nightblade at all. Hmm, this is a good question. In general, the Shadow Sun Cleric is very good. It's a combat trick, uh, it's a nice body, um, pretty cheap. The Betrayal, I've seen, sometimes it's completely useless, sometimes it wins you the game. Um, if you have uh, kind of a stalemate, yeah, like uh, you both have three, four creatures, you can pull off an amazing betrayal and really swing the tide. It becomes mass removal. Um, so this is a tough one, and I'm starting to worry a little bit about my mana curve with the three drops. Mm -hmm -hmm. And I have no other removal. But if I'll pick betrayal, people will laugh at me later because uh, the sun cleric is so good. So let's take the Sun Cleric and hope I'll get removal that is more solid. Okay. Interesting question. The Farseer is very decent. The Ringleader is... It really depends if you have... If you start with it in your hand and you got the coin, it's an amazing first turn drop. If you don't, on the other hand, you have to really work for it to be cost effective. Yes, uh, in general, you know, two mana for uh, two uh, bodies is very good, but uh, you have to work for it. But since I have no other two drops right now except for the raider, I think I'm gonna go with the ringleader. I don't really like the booty guard, the booty bay <laughs> bodyguard. Um, trying to keep this peach rated. Um, it's nice that it has taunt. Yeah, it is useful, but if I mean, I, I like guys that have taunt to be healthier, yeah, more toughness. So I'll go with the ringleader, hoping to snag some tempo advantage sometimes. Uh, if you want the farseer, it's okay. I'm just worried about my mana curve. Okay, moving on. This is not a Watcher deck, so I'm not gonna go with that. Um, Twilight Rake is the easy choice here. It's a 4 drop. If I'm slightly on the controlish side, I should have cards in my hand by the, by the time we get to turn 4. Uh, very decent. Definitely. Mercenary. Easy pick. Don't be shy. Cast it on turn 5. Okay, even if uh, it means that you have a turn or two, it's kind of weird. Yeah, like uh, 
uh, you have to cast more spells, less creatures, but it's so big on turn 5 that it's usually uh, you know, it's worth the, the, the problems, the disadvantages, yes. Okay, interesting question. The Master of the Sky, yeah, no, the, it has a decent body, it's okay, 4 mana for 4-4. Four, four. Um, compared for, to example, uh, to an Ogre, Maggie. The stealth sometimes can be very useful. Okay, if you have something like, um, for example, Questioning Adventurer, it's amazing. Um, maybe some other guy that you want to finish the game later. Um, mm -hmm. because I have a dilemma, yeah, because the Sun Fury Protector, you can cast it on turn 2. It's okay, not amazing. Sometimes you cast it and you force your enemy to actually you know, deal with your mercenary or, I don't know, your acolyte of pain, etc. Sorry, guys. Um, I'll go and try to go with the Master of Disguise, at least to see how good it is <laughs> in practice. Okay. Hmm. Morlock is irrelevant, as I always say. Tiger is very decent. I like uh, the fact that it's f beastie, uh, that it's, you know, big and has stealth. F but fan of knives is exactly what I need right now. I'm low on hard removal. Yeah, I only it comes with guys, yeah, which is okay. It draws a card. You almost always can create card advantage with it. So I'll go and try to create situations for my fan of dice. Oh, the same pick. Hmm. This is actually slightly less obvious because I do like the tiger. Um. Mm -hmm. Fan of knives. Fan of knives. Yeah, I still believe that I can create card advantage my fan of knives. Okay, this is just a uh, uh, generic 2-drop. Uh, 3-2 is just fine. Note that Vanish <laughs> is horrible. <laughs> Almost always. The reason being is that you usually cast it when you're behind on board position, right? Unless, uh, otherwise, why would you cast it? But it costs 6 mana. So the other guy has the upper hand, right? Because he casts back his best guys first. So it doesn't really solve anything. Yeah, it's like, you know, you're running away from your problems. You should face them. Yeah. Raptor it is. Yeah, I'm lacking on two drops, so I'm taking it. Um, I don't like Nova's Engineer ever since they uh, took away one point of toughness. Yeah, like the beta. I have an Acolyte of Pain already. Hmm, I'll go with the Grizzly. The taunt is useful pretty often. I'm pretty scared that I have no taunt guys, yeah, so... Mm, this is a, ta uh, a tough choice. I'll go with the Grizzly anyway. Oh, wonderful. I really like the, like the Bomber in general. I talked about it last time. And in addition, since I can add with my Dagger another point of damage, I almost always get a good deal out of my uh, YOLO bomber. Okay, mm, moving on. Hmm, the commander is kind of removal. It's slightly costy. Um, but this deck is becoming very cheap. This is kind of weird. This is not what I expected at all. But uh, you don't argue with the cards you get. Uh, s the Worgen actually is very good, and I think I'm gonna take it. You know, okay, th the reason is against guys that can do one damage, uh, heroes that can do one damage with their hero ability, you just keep it stealthed until you have something with two toughness to kill. Um, otherwise, you know, it's just useful. So I think I'll go with the Infiltrator. Yeah, one of the only decent one drops. Yeah, in general. Most one drops in the arena are you just don't want to waste a card on them, but the worgen is is usually good enough. I'll go with the champion here. 
I hate the Nightblade. The Farseer is okay, but I have serious 3 cost uh, mana problems. Uh, the champion sometimes can really swing the game, even though it's quite expensive. Trivial pick, crap, crap, amazing, you see? I have no choice, I had to pick it now, because the it's the card quality is, is by far out uh, reaches, you know, my mana curve problems right now. I'm gonna go with the assassinate, because I feel that I don't have Know, enough removal, I always have to, you know, I have to combo and then maybe make use of some fan of knives and a dagger. It's a problem if it puts down uh, some 8 8 tree. Uh, so I have to use the assassinate. In general, I, I feel naked if I don't have hard removal in my deck. Uh, easy pick. Uh, the ogre is very relevant with my two fan of knives. And, well, basically that's it, but. <laughs> Since it's a 4-4 four, for four, 4 mana, I feel okay with this pick. Besides, I hope I'll get some more spells. This is not the spells I, <laughs> I was talking about. Um, I really don't like the Sinister Trike. I mean, unless you're playing a constructed Maligos deck or something, I really don't see the point. I mean, um, if my opponent uh, would offer me, uh, what would I prefer? That uh, I'll start with 3 health less, and he starts with 1 less card in his hand, forget even about the mana cost, then I would always take the opportunity. So, yeah. Um, it's useful if you want to activate combos, yes, because you know you can always cast it, it does the same, it's very cheap, and you activate the combo on an agent or something. Um, but, this time we have no dilemma, because the Spiteful Smith is amazing, specifically in a rogue deck. Okay, notice that unlike, for example, the Shaman, eh, excuse me, uh, the Druid, your one power <laughs> worth of attack is a weapon. So the range ability is very, very important for you, okay? Uh, not to mention that it's a 4, 6, 4, 5, which is okay, it's decent. Um, use the enrage wisely. Amazing pack. I wish they wouldn't. <laughs> they weren't all together. Um, I really want to take the shield master, but I'll go with the blades because it's the only weapon I have right now, except for my dagger. And it's kind of a removal, like all weapons. And as I said before, I feel naked when I don't have enough removal. Uh, the war organ is quite decent, specifically in my deck. I have. Just too many free drops. Assassin's Blade it is. Easy pick, crappy cards, Yolo Bomber. Mm -hmm. Another easy pick, good thing I didn't take the second Acolyte of Pain uh, over the Grizzly. What the heck? It's like the third, third Sinister Trike. Um, again, uh, in this deck it seems that I won't have any more spells actually to deal damage except for the Fan of Knives. Uh, but once again, I don't need to think about it too much. Spiteful Smith it is. Wonderful. Assassinate. Always good card to have. No brainer once again. Hmm. And my epic pick is not that good. It's not that epic, haha. Hmm. All three are not bad and not amazing. I'm not going to take the Blood Knight, even though um, sometimes you steal a Divine Shield from the enemy and you know you just swing the game and win on like turn three. Um, but I have tons of three drops. Multi Giant is not is pretty good in a rogue deck since I'll be attacking creatures. Yeah, to remove them with my dagger, so I will be on low health. On the other hand, the Sea Giant... Hmm, sea Giant is actually castable <laughs> earlier. Um, I'll go with the Molten Giant, I'll see how it goes. Okay guys, that's it. Notice that uh, my mana curve looks awkward, but it's actually not that bad. Yeah, I have two Assassinates and an Assassin's Blade that costs 5 but I don't really cast them 
on turn 5 pretty much ever. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with my early game most of the time. Uh, I can swing tempo with a ringleader, maybe a lucky bomber. Um, if it doesn't work, I have the more controlish cards. So I think this is gonna be a very interesting deck to play. Um, I even have some beef on the top side, which is nice. Um, not amazing. There are some cards that I would like to get, but yeah. Wish me luck, guys. This was the Rogue tutorial.